Hello and welcome to the Google Digital Garage. My name is Daryl and I'm a trainer for the free skills training program, the Google Digital Garage. A little bit about myself before we go ahead and dive in. I come from an incredibly diverse background within sales, recruitment, hospitality, learning and development, and of course within tech. But I dedicate the majority of my time to help close the digital skills gap that is so prevalent in our world today through amazing initiatives just like this one. But I'm not here alone. We're very, very fortunate to have Mohammed with us here today, uh, moderating today's chat. And if you are viewing us through a laptop or a desktop, you'll be able to identify Mohammed just on the right-hand side, and he'll have a little blue spanner next to his name. If you're viewing us through a, a mobile device, there's a very good chance that the chat will be just below us. Now, before we jump in, I want to make sure it's really, really accessible for everybody to join today. So a couple of housekeeping tips. First and foremost, if you're having any problems hearing me or seeing me today, please go ahead and refresh your browser. It normally irons out any potential problems. Next up, if you'd like to get involved with today's chat, which myself and Mohammed would absolutely love, you would be required to have a YouTube account. YouTube, it's relatively easy to get set up. You just head over to the chat function, set up that account, and then you'll be able to fire over those questions to myself and Mohammed. And we will be pausing throughout today's session for any particular questions. But as the session's going along, don't be shy. Pop in your highs, pop in your emojis, let us know what your thoughts are, let us know what your questions are, but we really look forward to your engagement. Next up, this particular live training is part of a broader offering from the Google Digital Garage, so I hugely encourage you to click in the link in the description below. It'll take you to their website and give you an absolute plethora of information, online courses, and many, many more live webinars very similar to this one. Last thing I'd like to mention is if you would like to have the subtitles, in other words, the closed captions for today's session, because I tend to speak rather fast, I will do my very best to slow down. You may or may not have already picked up that accent, but in order to support you through today's session, all you need to do is hover over the video if you're viewing us through a laptop or a desktop and find the setting within the video to uh, look like a little gear cog. Once you tap onto that, you can click onto another icon that says CC, which stands for closed captions, and you'll be able to follow along and get the subtitles as we go through our today's session. But without further ado, that's the housekeeping tips out of the way. You now know a little bit more about myself, you know a little bit more about Mohammed, but we would not like to know a little bit more about you. So, so far we have Alejandro calling in. Hello to you. We've got Parkit, Pitch It, Morit. I absolutely love that name. Hello to you. We've got uh, one. Hello to you. We got Milen calling in. Good afternoon from Portugal. Fantastic. A big, big welcome. Welcome to all of you. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and say hello to Mohammed. He's there to answer any questions and help you as we go along. So get involved. We would love to hear from you. Without further ado, let's jump into what are we going to be covering over the next hour? Well, number one, we're going to jump into understanding what is search advertising. It is one way to advertise, but it's not the only way, but it is a really, really good way if you like to drive sales. But I don't want to give too much away. Then we're going to jump into utilizing display advertising, which is another great way to advertise. But again, maybe we're leaning towards brand awareness. Again, we'll be talking about that very shortly. Then last but not least, we're going to look at how we can learn about social advertising. Because let's face it, we live in the social media era and we are constantly on social media. I'm going to make that assumption that many of us are on social media, but if you aren't, kudos to you, but majority of us are. With, with, this, with that being said, uh, today's session is going to be jam-packed with lots of information, and maybe you feel like, oh, this is a great hour, but I can't remember everything. So just to let you know, this particular live training will be available as a recording for approximately 24 hours. All you'll need to do is click on the same link that you used to join today's session, and you'll be able to rewind fast forward and really absorb the information at your own pace. Next up, we're going to go ahead and jump into a really great opportunity. If you currently are in the UK and you're a small business or charity, Google is offering free one-to-one -one mentoring sessions to small businesses and charities throughout the UK. Now, I am super proud to be a part of this along with our wonderful mentor, Mohammed. He is also a mentor for this amazing initiative. So if you are in the UK, please go ahead and take down this link, which is g.co forward slash UK mentoring. And we look forward to hopefully helping you from a personal point of view, either it's a career, maybe you're looking to expand your business, maybe you're looking to grow as a business, maybe you're looking at a social media strategy. The one thing that I would recommend if you do sign up, come with an objective. We only have an hour. We'd love to help you with everything, but we simply can't. So come with an objective for that hour so we can really help you move through that session. 
without further ado, let's jump into today's session, which is going to be search advertising. So what is search advertising? It's advertising on search engines like Bing or Google. Now, I would have a question out there to you. I'm gonna ask you quite a few questions throughout today's session. Feel free to jump in and there's no such thing as a silly answer or the wrong answer. Today, we're looking at ideating ideas. So the first question I'd like to put out to all of you, please go ahead and pop into the chat. Why do you think a business like yours would want to advertise on Google? Now, we don't have to overcomplicate it. It's a simple question. Why would you, as a business, sole trader, or freelancer, would like to advertise on Google? Why would you do that? Pop it into the chat. Myself and Mohammed would love to know. We've got a couple more hellos into the chat. We got, uh, I think I've said hello to Rizwan. Uh, Parkhead City's calling from Chester, UK. Sandra, big, big welcome to you. Uh, who else do we have? We have Nature Discoveries, another beautiful name. Hello to you with a big thumbs up. And we got Ingrid, also hello with one of my favorite emojis. And then Girl Guiding Northeast. England to reach lots of people. Thank you so much for answering that question. Why would a business like yours want to reach more people? Well, we're going to reach a lot of people through Google if we are clever on how we are going to think about creating this advertisement. So let's just take a step back and go, okay, whew, great intro, Daryl. We welcomed everybody. Let's just take a little bit of a chill pill and now dive into something hopefully that you're all familiar with. So I'm going to pop it up on screen, and this is what we call a SERP. Now, it's an acronym that you may or may not use, but SERP stands for Search Engine Results Page. And essentially, it's going to entail quite a few things that we need to consider. Now, in order for Google or any search engine to work, uh, we as users need to input a search query. Now, that search query will then once we've clicked enter, Google or Bing or whatever search engine you're using will populate the most relevant, up-to-date information and provide you with hopefully what you're looking for. And just below that, we have something called paid advertisements. Uh, that's all about the advertising. This is when we're thinking about search engine marketing, another acronym, which is SEM, followed by the last listing, which is something called an organic listing. Now, I'm not going to go too much into detail, but to put it in very basic layman's terms, an organic listing is if you have a website that you have publicly posted on the internet, you will have an organic listing. However, that listing could be on the 500th page. It could be on the 1,000th page. It could be on the second page. Maybe not when the beginning, but you look at looking at you look at search engine optimization to increase that. But that's not something we're going to focus on today. We're going to talk about advertisements, focusing on that little yellow border. So, what we're going to do is, I want to go ahead and jump into a little bit of a, an example. Now, this is probably one of the best ways we can communicate and articulate this to you. Is let's jump into a, a wonderful story, or I suppose. It's, it's a case study, should we say. So Poneria's Pizzeria is an Italian restaurant situated in Edge Boston, Birmingham. Paulie wants to increase sales and is interested to know how digital advert advertising can help. And maybe you can resonate with this. Maybe this is why you're here today to learn more about how digital advertising can help you as a business, charity, or an organization. I want you to keep in mind, while I'm going through this particular example, what I'd like you all to do is hopefully you all have a pen and pad ready to go and start ideating ideas and start putting down some thoughts because this is going to help you when you start building up that campaign that we're going to talk about very, very shortly. So as much as we're going to talk about Polaria's Pizza, please keep your mind, keep your mind, keep your business in mind or keep whatever you're looking to advertise in mind so you can start thinking, oh, what would I say for my business? Or what would I use for my organization? So keeping that in mind, we're going to have a process when it comes to search engine marketing, and we're going to break it down to four steps. Number one, we're going to jump into understand your customers. This is what makes everything else happen. And you'll hear me say this quite often, pretty much in all of the Google Digital Garage sessions and many of my own sessions, but understand your customers. Understand who are you advertising to? And there's many, many different tools on how we can help you with that. If you're trying to find out a little bit more about your customers, stick around the Google Digital Garage, click in the link in the description below. There's many, many more trainings that will help support you with that. But then we're gonna jump into step number two, which is finding keywords, incredibly important. Next up, creating an ad copy, something that's gonna capture your attention of your customers. And then last but not least, we're going to pull it all together. 
in my personal opinion, the pulling it all together part is the easy part. It's because you're going to jump into something called Google Ads, which is really, really simple to use. I could be slightly biased, but let's go ahead and jump in and you can give your own opinion on how simple it may be for you. So step number one is understanding your customers. Who is your audience? Where are they? What's important to them? This is the starting point of any advertisements, because if you're going to advertise, we need to know who we're advertising to so we can start talking their language. Uh, so first and foremost, we're going to go, who is your audience? Now, in this particular instance, Polaria's Pizza is students, busy professionals, and pizza lovers. But what I'd like you all to do right now is just take out a pen and pad, or feel free to share it within the chat. Myself and Mohammed would love to know, but name three target audiences who may be searching for a business like yours. And if you want to add it to the chat, just make sure you name what type of business you have and then the audience that might follow. Polaria's Pizza is students, busy professionals, and pizza lovers. Now, this is not expensive. It's starting at the basics. Then we jump into where are they? Well, the pizzeria is located in Birmingham. So Edge Boston is place to go. But when we're thinking about the places that they are located, not only can we think about the city or we can think about the postal code, we can think about that general area. And there's lots of different words that we can use to reference a specific location in the world. So keep that in mind. Next up, what's important to them? Very, very important. Name three things that are important to your, what, what is important to your customers? For Paul Luria's Pizza, it's a variety of toppings. It is fast delivery and it's authentic ingredients. I am a massive pizza lover and I lean towards fast delivery because I want to get the pizza in my belly as fast as possible. But if Paul Luria Pizza understood that, they're going to communicate a message through advertising a little bit more effectively. So number two is then create a keyword plan. Now that we've understood our target audience, we then come up with keywords and there is loads of different ways to find out those keywords. But again, let's take a big pause, Daryl. Let's take a big breath in and go, whoa, 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 Daryl, what is a keyword again? Well, let's go ahead and read that. So a keyword are words or phrases that are used to match your adverts with the terms that people are searching for. So I often ask the question, why is a tightly themed keyword list so important to your charity, organization, or a business? Because essentially, when we're using search engines, you have yourself, which is your business, your charity, or your organization, and then you have your customers. And in between that is the internet. But the one driving factor between the two in terms of search engine uh, is going to be the keywords. So how do we learn more about keywords? Well, what you will find out within Google Ads, Google Ads has something called the Google Keyword Planner. Don't want to get ahead of myself, and I'm pretty sure Mohammed will pop that link into the chat very, very shortly. But this will be integrated within Google Ads, again, a free platform to use before you start advertising. Then how many combinations can we make with keywords? Well, there are tons of ways. So when we're thinking about keywords, we need to think about what are the keywords that are closely related to your business. In this particular instance, Polarius Pizza, it's pizza, it's fast food, and it's takeaway. That's what the business is about. Then what we want to do is incorporate a couple of locality keywords. And the locality keywords be the, with the likes of the postal code, which is B18 in the UK, uh, or Edge Boston, or Birmingham. Then with the locality and the words that are closely related to the business, we can make a variety of keywords that come together. For example, the combination of keywords would be pizza, B18, part of the postal code, pizza, Birmingham. We've got fast food, Birmingham. We've got takeaway, B18. Now, these keywords aren't going to be set in stone. It's going to be something that you're going to build on over time and start to find out which keywords are performing more than others. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a little bit of an exercise. We're going to jump into a simple example of, I'm going to pop them all up on screen. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a, I don't know, go back in the day when you do a little mix and match and compare and join the dot type vibe. So Please get involved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so, so simple and easy for you to answer these. We have blue, perp, uh, which is a mobile hairdresser in Birmingham. We have red, which is a phone repair shop in Birmingham. Then we have yellow, cupcake shop in Birmingham. Then we have green, online fancy dress shop. Now, what I would like you all to do is really start brainstorming this right now and start to add this into the chat. I want you to mix these up. 
So let's say, for example, we have blue. Don't have to write mobile hairdresser in Birmingham. Just type blue into the chat and then type the keywords that match that particular business. So as we're doing this, I want you to go ahead and pop it into the chat and I'm going to give you an example of what, what I'd like you to do. So I'm going to use red, which is going to be the phone repair shop in Birmingham. So I'm going to go ahead and type red into the chat. Now I'm going to put a dash and then I'm going to start typing in the keywords that are closely related to that business. So we have the first keyword at the very bottom, all in gray. We have a phone repair, Beham City Center. Well, I think I found the first keyword that is closely related to the business. So that is going to be number red, number red, the number red is not a number. Red is a color. So red. And you could even be so cool as Mohammed's to get a little emoji that highlights that red. But we've got red. And then I'm going to type in phone repair Beham City Center. That's the first one. Next one, it says Barber Birmingham. Mm, doesn't really match to red. Next one, American football referee outfits. Mm, again, doesn't really max, max, match red. Next up, same day cakes Birmingham. Still not on the right track. Next up, where can I fix my iPhone? Oh, okay. Now we're talking about Beham and we're talking about a phone repair shop. Where can I fix my iPhone the screen Beham? Those are some great keywords. I'm gonna I'm gonna start typing that as well. So it's gonna be red, it's gonna be phone repair Beham City Center. Second one's gonna be where can I fix my iPhone screen Beham and so on and so forth. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but I'd like at least one of you to give blue a go, another one to give yellow a go, another one to give green it a go. This real simple exercise will get you to start thinking about how you can match your keywords to your own business. So let's see if we have any coming in through. I don't see any as of yet because I'm pretty sure you're probably all typing it away. So try to get involved. And if you are going to get involved in the chat, please make sure you're writing this down and really going through this exercise because this exercise is going to help you quite a bit when you jump into your own advertisements because there is a huge focus on keywords and making sure that you know what keywords to use and understanding that your customers will use those specific keywords. So I'm going to hang around maybe for another, um, not even minutes, maybe 30 seconds, because the next slide is going to have all the answers. And I don't want to give you all the answers. I'm really hoping that we just get at least one or two of those who are going to attempt and match up those keywords to that business. Let's see. I'm going to give you another few seconds before we jump in. Take a sip of coffee. Okay. I don't see anything. You could be still typing, but there we go. Alejandro, you are absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for jumping in. So we have Alejandro with yellow, which is cupcakes costume. Yes, I would definitely say that one because it's a cupcake shop. Next one, we've got um, uh, best cupcakes in Birmingham. Pretty sure that's closely related to that business. Next up is red velvet cupcakes, Birmingham, and then same day cafes, Birmingham. I think you added that one. Oh, no, it's definitely there as well. You did a fantastic job. Millen did the same thing with yellow, same day cakes, Birmingham, red velvet cupcake in Birmingham. So thanks so much for getting involved. For those who are still typing, maybe they'll come in, uh, maybe not, but make sure you jump them, pop them down somewhere. Here's the answers. And again, a really great exercise to get you to understand that we need to, thank you so much for Ritz Wine as well, to get involved. Thank you so much. When it comes to these keywords and matching them up to the business, again, remember your business. What is your business? Start thinking about those keywords. Then to support you with this, there is something called the Google Keyword Planner that I spoke to you about earlier, which will be integrated within Google Ads. But there's many other ways to learn more about the keywords. If you'd like some more support on this, please make sure you join us for those one-to-one -one mentoring sessions. And myself, Mohammed, and many other digital experts will be ready and waiting to help you. So with that being said, let's jump into step number three, which is going to be creating engaging search advertising. Number one, we understood the customers. Number two, we really started to work out what those keywords are. Now, we're going to create engaging search adverts. Now, okay, we've spoken about these keywords. What's next? Well, let's go through the key elements in description and relating to Paul Arias Pizza for an example. So we have uh, an example of the um, actual words that we are going to use in the advertisements. So if we draw our attention to the far right on the bottom, which is an advert that you may have seen before, the blue link, 
with a website and it says green with an advert and it's got a pizza to you in 15 minutes or we'll give you a free pizza order now. So we want to match up the headliner to the customer. Similar example that we spoke about before, I want you to say blue, type in blue, dash, then which are the headlines? It's not going to be the keywords now. We've done the keywords. Now these are going to be the actual words of the headline of the advertisements. Then you're going to use blue, type it in, yellow, type it in, green, type it in. Let's see if we can get one person to do blue, one person to do yellow, one person to do green. So actually I might give away blue while you're thinking about that. We have blue, people who value convenience. When people value convenience, well, look at the first keyword, fast 15 minute delivery. That's going to be my choice. That's something that I really would like to have is food quickly. Another one, uh, scheduled delivery available. Mm, that's pretty convenient. I think that's the two that we're going to go with. So blue, I've already done it. I'm going to see if can, someone else can do yellow and green. But blue is going to be fast 15 minute delivery and scheduled delivery available. As I told you before, I love pizzas. If I came across this advertisement and I was really hungry, I might have a tendency to click onto it. And this is what we're looking to do as advertisers, I would suppose. So we've got melon, yellow, 15 different toppings because it's a variety and there's gonna be one more, a different deal every day. So thanks so much for getting involved. Those are the answers. Blue, schedule delivery available. Uh, fast 15 minute delivery. And yes, Milen, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, Milen, uh, Graka, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, my apologies, but thank you so much for getting involved and you are absolutely on point. Step number four is gonna be pulling it all together. Step number one, understand customers. Step number two, learn the keywords, find out those keywords. Step number three is learn what is the headline? What headline are we gonna use? And then once and only once we have that information, we're gonna put it all together by jumping onto something called Google Ads. All you're gonna do is you're gonna type in Google Ads within Google, you're gonna open up probably the first link that you find within the SERP search engine results page, and then you're gonna go ahead and create an account. Free account to set up. Once you're all set up, you're going to then click on the big blue plus button. Very, very universal amongst all Google's platforms is once you look for that blue plus sign, you know you're about to create something. Once you click onto that, you're going to select a new campaign. For those thinking, well, you lost me already. I don't know what a campaign is. Don't overcomplicate it. So campaign, let's think of it basically. I sell women's shoes and men's shoes. If I want to create a campaign, do I really want to sell men's shoes to women and men? Now, that's not to say that women don't buy men's shoes and vice versa, but if I want to create a campaign that's going to be specifically for an audience, I want to start thinking about creating that campaign. So plus plus icon, new campaign, and then you're going to select search as a campaign type. This is going to be a little bit different later, but we're going to choose a search as a campaign type. And then once you've got that set up, we now need to find the targeting. So step number four is all about getting the location. Do you want to advertise in a specific city, in a specific postal code? You'll even get the ability to exclude certain areas. Then you can add those keywords. Remember, we've done some brainstorming. You've all got involved with that. We're going to take those keywords and we're going to start using them with those different combinations that we've created earlier. And then step number six is create your advert. Put in that headline that's gonna capture your attention of your audience and your customers, adding the final URL, which is essentially the link that you would like them to land on, which is probably gonna be your website. And then you can go ahead and look at what it will look like on a mobile device and a desktop, and then you are ready to go. So that was the first part of today's session. If you are still with us, let's see if there's any questions. I have not seen any questions as of yet. Friendly reminder, there's no such thing as a silly question. We would love to hear from you. Please pop it into the chat. Anything, anything that you're concerned about or you're not familiar with or you have any kind of interest in, pop it into the chat. That's what we're here to do. So that's the first part. We've spoken about search advertisements, getting our advert on the first page of Google underneath that search query. But perhaps maybe you'd like to use display advertising. Now display advertising is essentially uh, a broad to a broad audience. It's kind of like a billboard for your business where lots of people can see your ad, but only few might actually engage as a result. And you may think, well, Daryl, if I'm advertising, why would I want to advertise without people to engage? Well, 
Let's first determine what is a display advert. If I had to put it in really basic terms, imagine you are driving down a long road with your family or by yourself, either or you are driving and you see tons of buildings in front of you, like lots and lots of buildings. And in the far distance, there is a massive building. But you don't know what it is, but you're driving and then you come across this big billboard as you're driving down the road and it says massive casino and it's the biggest shopping center in the world. Yes, I just made that up, but that's what it is. And that building in the fine distance is going to probably be the biggest casino. Now, take that same principle when you are browsing the internet. Now, say, for example, you are on the hunt to find out what is the latest around the golfing world. Who is the best golfer in the world right now? You jump onto a website and you start searching, you start reading, and then just on the right-hand side, something pops up like a banner. And the banner says, golf balls or golf clubs for $2.99 or you're going to sell something. That's essentially what we're looking at when it's display advertisements. Putting our advert where customers might be to attract them and to get them more brand awareness. So how do display advertisements differ from search advertising? Well, let's put it out in two different sides. So we have on the left, we have search advertisements or search advertising, which is focused around matching adverts to the search queries. And remember the search queries entails the keywords and they are normally used within Google or any other platform or other search engine. Then the most relevant are when the primary objective is to generate sales. So if your business goal right now is to generate sales, you might wanna lead towards search advertisements. Otherwise, display adver advertising is gonna be focused around serving diff uh, adverts across different websites. So we're now going to put in an advertisement, which is going to be a banner. It could be a video. It could be text. It could be over the top. There's lots of different ways where we can display banners and those billboards on other websites. But the most relevant and primary objective is to brand, is to drive brand awareness and, of course, some traffic. But really, depending on what your goal is, depending on what advertisements you would like to move forward with. Again, similar process. We're going to jump into four basic steps. Number one. You've heard me say it, you'll hear me say it a lot more in the future, understand your customers, understand your customers. This is more what makes everything else happen. How do we understand our customers, by the way? Speak to them, create a form of a survey of some sort, using Google Analytics, using social insights. There's so many different ways for you to learn more about your customers. Please make sure you do that. Next up, find placement ideas, because now we're looking to place that advert on the internet somewhere. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and think about creating an ad creative. What is gonna make it appealing for them to click onto it? And last but not least, we're gonna pull it all together, which is the easiest part in my mind. If you've got step one, two, and three all wrapped up, number four is just quick and easy. Let's put it all together and start advertising. So step number one is understand your customers. Who is your audience and where are they? Now, if I had to ask you all, who are your audience and where are they? Would you be able to answer that? And if you feel you could answer that, pop it into the chat. What's your business? Who's your audience? And where are they? Pop them into the chat because this is a really fundamental um, fundamental information that we need to know. So if you, feel, if you feel inclined, please go ahead and pop into the chat. What's the name of your business? Who's your audience? And where are they? So in this particular instance, we are using Polaria's Pizza. Polaria's Pizza, remember, the audience is focused around students, busy professionals, and pizza lovers, a.k.a. Me, I love pizzas, and I'm pretty sure many of you do too. Then where are they? But this time, we're not looking at the locality in terms of the uh, actual location or postal code or city. We are now trying to find out where are they on the internet? Are they on a student website? Are they on a local food directory? Are they on food blogs? Where are they? Understanding the customers, again, speak to your customers, get to know them, get to know more about them, and this will give you the answers that you are looking to get. Number two is finding placement ideas. You simply enter your relevant keywords into the display planner, which is uh, actually the Google Display Network, will help you. The Google Display Network is going to allow you to have a little bit more insight as where could you potentially advertise and which one would be of more benefit to you to advertise in one particular place by a little bit more information about how previous ads were before. So that's a whole other topic for another day, but this is a great tool to help you learn more about where are you going to place these adverts. Step number three is going to be creating engaging advert. So making your adverts visually appealing. 
Different from search adver ad advertising, because search advertising is a main headline and a few lines that follow, display advertising is all about that visual appeal. Particularly if you had a pizza, maybe you'd show a pizza, pizza like you see right now or a pizza with cheese melting off, whatever it may be to capture the attention and then have a couple of simple match uh, headers, which is pizza in edge Boston, buy one, second one, get one free. If I was close by, I might even go ahead and buy it. Step number four is then going to be bringing it all together. Understanding who your customers are, understanding where they are online, finding the relevant placement ideas in terms of where we're going to put this advert, and then creating that advert and then placing that advert where your customers are going to be. How are we going to do that? Let's going to go ahead and summarize that. Number one, we're going to jump into log into Google Ads. If you haven't done so already, I do recommend everybody that isn't familiar or hasn't advertised before, go ahead and do this straight after today's session or as soon as you have some time, jump into Google, type in Google Ads, create your own account and start to have a look and a feel and maybe you'll be able to start your own campaign without putting any money in yet, but just so you understand what you're in for and what is going to be the step-by-step -step process that I'm about to show you, which is logging in. Then we're going to click the big plus sign, which is the blue button, which is then going to create a campaign. But before we chose search as a campaign type, this particular instance, we're going to choose a display as a campaign type. Then we're going to choose targeting and being specific. Where would you like to advertise this in terms of location? And then step number four, find some relevant website placements. So are uh, you going to find a website that is about takeaways? Maybe in this particular instance, Paul Rias Pizza would probably want to do it on the likes of Menu with Price, Zomato, Takeaway.co.uk. When people are looking to get food, great place to put adverts and get more brand awareness. Step number five is create the advert with all the information that you've created within the first three steps. And then you can review it and see what it looks like on a mobile device, see what it looks like on the website, and then go ahead and publish it. And there we go. Essentially, now we've got an advert that is displayed in an area on the internet, on a web page where customers might be looking, or hopefully where they'll be looking if you've done your research around understanding customers. Now, I haven't seen any of the questions as of yet, so please do let us know if you have any other questions, because that's really what it's about, because we're going to jump into the second last point where we come to questions. Now, We've run through search adver advertising. We've ran through display advertising. We ran through how do we get started and we broke it down to four basic steps. And with those, we always started with understanding your customers. How do we understand more about our customers? Speak to them, create a survey on Google Forms that they can fill out, asking the information that you're looking to get. Uh, could be that you jump into your Google Analytics or your social insights to find out more about them. If you want to know more about analytics and understand more about social insights, I highly recommend that you click in the link in the description below. It'll take you to the website and there are many, many more live webinars on those particular topics. And I hopefully will see you in some future sessions. But also myself and Mohammed and the team would love to know how are you enjoying this? Do you, we'd love your feedback. So please go to goo.gle forward slash digital garage feedback. Now you see what I did there? Something that I hope that you all do. Now we aren't expecting anything, but we would love some feedback. So how do we get feedback from all of you wonderful individuals? We constantly ask. We ask, let us know how it was. How was the training session? How can we improve it? And I highly recommend that you do something similar and incorporate that in your day-to-day -day activities within your business and your organization. The more you ask, the more you ask for feedback, the more you receive that feedback. And the feedback that you hopefully will give us today will help us improve this moving forward and hopefully future participants and future attendees will learn even more on the basis of what you shared today. So hopefully it's been valuable. If you'd like to give us some feedback, Mohammed has popped the link into the chat. All you need to do is click onto it, fill out a simple form, but we're going to jump into the last part. We'll reference this link towards the end and it would be an absolutely fantastic if you can take some time to fill it out and let us know what you thought about today's session. But so far, we've got Alejandro popping in. Thank you so much for letting us know about your business. So your business is about a pool supply store. That's absolutely fantastic. And now he's already started to list the types of organizations that might be interested in. Who are they? Who is his customers? Well, hotels. Yes. 
hotels have lots of pools and I wish I was in one right now, but I'm in the cold UK. Then we have residential pool owners, of course. Uh, then we have uh, condominiums, fantastic public pools, uh, Panama City is now the locations. And Alejandro has even got some keywords, which is pool chemicals, pool pumps, pool filters, pool accessories, pool uh, supply stores. I feel like you've prepared this. If you have done all of this, Alejandro, in this session, a huge kudos to you. That is absolutely phenomenal. And I think hopefully many of you watching here today will be inspired by that because those few short words is really valuable information to Alejandro's company, which is a pool supply store. So again, if you want to try match that, get involved. Pop it into the chat, just like Alejandro's done. Let us know what your company is. Then start following with what type of, uh, who, where are your customers or who are they going to be? And then type in some keywords. Let us know what those keywords are, but that's absolutely phenomenal. So let's go ahead and yes, in this session, Alejandro, you are fantastic. You are amazing. So kudos to you. Please, anybody else wants to get involved, pop it into the chat because that's what it's about. And this is what my, makes myself and Mohammed really, really enjoy these sessions because there is an outcome. And we're all looking for some outcomes because you are spending your time here with myself and Mohammed. Let's make it impactful. So with that being said, let's jump into the last part, which is around social paid advertisements. We've spoken about search advertising, which is great for driving sales. We spoke about display advertising, which is great for growing brand awareness. But now we want to talk about social paid advertisements. But before we do, again, take a big breath in. Let's slow down the pace and think, oh, Daryl, what is social advertising? Well, as it says, it's basically paid advertisements on social networks like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Now, we're currently on YouTube right now. Hopefully, you don't see too many adverts at the moment, but it could be an opportunity. YouTube is a great place to advertise. Then also known as paid social media or social media marketing. You might already have a presence on these platforms, but advertising allows you to reach those hard-to-reach potential customers. If you're currently on social media right now and you are posting, you will only have a certain reach. Maybe that'll only reach your friends and your followers or maybe the friends of your followers, but it will not go to the ends of the world. And maybe unless it goes viral and lots of people share it, but the likelihood is that it will only have a certain reach. So this is when paid social media comes to play. So why should we start using social advertising? Well, for example, if you just wanted to drive broad awareness of your business, you wanna make people know who you are, you might wanna create adverts with a specific objective to get your target audience to like a page. So let's say, for example, Jasper's market has just opened up. It's a brand new market and we want to get people to know about it. But not only do we want people to know about it, we have an objective. They know about it. They can click on the button and then they can like our page. And if they like the page, future posts might be shown on their, on their feed, which will hopefully raise more brand awareness. Alternatively, you might have to drive people who already like your page to a special promotion that you have on your website. Maybe you've got lots of people that are interested in following your business, advertising to maybe draw them, draw their attention to an announcement. Christmas gifts or special giveaways around Black Friday or whatever is coming up, how can you communicate that effectively and push it out there? And hopefully your RIO, which is a return on investments, will hopefully allow you to gain lots of people to your business to start selling your products or your services. It's best built an audience before you start to promote those special offers. Very similar to what we've spoken about in the previous um, sections, which was understand your customers and then think about what do they want? Do they want stuff for free? Do they want stuff fast? Do they want stuff in packages? Do they want stuff, I don't know. <laughs> There's so many different things that we can think about what your customers want, but I can't tell you, Mohammed can't tell you, only your guests, your, your customers can tell you. So what is the main difference between organic and paid social media? As mentioned, many of us are on social media and I'm gonna run a very simple exercise right now and I really hope that you get involved. And it's really simple. If you, are currently on social media in any form or fashion, go ahead and pop in your favorite emoji within the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and pop mine in, 
which is, I don't even know if it's a favorite one. It's just uh, the first one that I'm going to pick, which is quite random. Uh, let's do a smiley face. So I'm going to do that one. If you are currently on social media, just pop in your favorite emoji within the chat, and it's hopefully going to answer a few questions a little bit later. So if you're on social media, pop in your favorite emoji. We would love to know. But while we are look, while we are getting those to come in, let's look at the main differences between organic and paid social media. Well, we have organic social media. Organic social media is on the likes of, we've got Girl Guided with a really awesome uh, emoji, well, a robot. We've got Melon with a big smiley face, Sandra with the sunglasses. Um, we got Mohammed with a coffee cup. We've got Park at Pitch It More it with a bus. Absolutely fantastic. That's what it's about. Thanks so much for engaging today. So the difference between the two and those that you are, are currently on social media, Alejandro with a big tick. Uh, let's say I'm on social media too. I'm on social media because I like to communicate with my friends and my family. So when it comes to me freely posting, which all of us can do, we can grab our phone right now or go on the computer and start posting, but the content will appear on business profile and in people's feeds, but you can only reach your followers and friends of followers. So everything's gonna be free and you can do it and you can post it, but that's not really going to reach the ends of the earth where you're trying to reach the customers. So maybe you're like Jasper's market or you're at a business right now, where's the standpoint, we've got Christmas coming up. We've got Black Friday coming up. How can we get people to know more about our business so we can drive traffic and get people to buy? Well, social media is a great tool. So what we can use is paid advertisements where you can pay for adverts to appear in more places and you can reach anyone. When I mean anybody, literally anybody that comes across it, which is quite phenomenal. And if you're reaching a, rod, a rod larger group, you may get ability to grow your brand. But again, please keep in mind when you're advertising, as much as we really want to know who your customers are, it's really, really important is what are you looking to do? Are you looking to drive sales? Are you looking to raise more brand awareness? Now, you may say, Daryl, I want to do both. Well, great that we want to do both, but have a strategic approach to that. Because when you are looking to create a campaign in Google Ads, be specific trying to raise your brand awareness. And then once you've got some brand awareness, you can start promoting that and hopefully drive some sales. So try to find out what that is. So let's look, let's look at a couple of comparisons. First and foremost, what social media platform is that? Does anybody know? Is this familiar to you? What social media platform is that? Pop it into the chat. But on organic social media, we have a post from Fabletics. Fabletics UK on the far left, life is a journey, find your workout inspiration with Fabletics, and then it's got a picture. It does have a tiny link just below, but yes, Girl Guided Northeast, it is Facebook. On the far right-hand side, let me know also, it's a Facebook post, but what's the difference between the two? Pop it into the chat. What is the main difference between these two posts? They've both got the same photo. they both got the same name. They both got the same title, but there is a key difference. There is one big key difference. What is that key difference? And hopefully it should stand out like a sore thumb because that is what we call a CTA. If anybody doesn't know what that acronym is, is a CTA stands for call to action. So the, one of the major big changes between these two uh, interfaces is that there is a button that says like page. Now, if you are on the left-hand side and all of us can freely post, a lot of us may go, ooh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, nothing much to do Yeah, Let me just keep on scrolling. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's move down. That's pretty cool. So with the first one, there is no objective. There's no way to lead your customers to do something. However, advertisements will show who you are. And then if they're interested, instead of them going, oh, I like that, uh, I like it, but I don't know what to do. Let me go into Google. Let me type in Fabletics UK, or let me try to find the social media and find out what they're all about. Instead, you can just click onto like page, and that's hopefully what your aim is as a company. Next up, what is this social media platform? Pop it into the chat. But again, we have an organic social media and a paid social media. The one on the left, some really nice gold shoes. It's both posted by Adidas Original. Now, remember, what I'd like you to have an understanding of is, I'm going to make the assumption that we all do something similar, but I do it all the time, is if we are on social media, what are we doing? We're swiping and swiping and swiping and swiping and swiping. But while we're swiping, if I came across the post on the left with a gold trimming, I'd be like, oh, those are cool shoes. I want to buy them. 
how do I buy them? Where do I go? Uh, I could perhaps maybe click on the on the handle, which is Adidas Original. Maybe I can go to their profile and then I'll look at the description or their bio to find out where their website is. And then I'm gonna click onto the website. And then when I click onto the website, I get to the website. When I open up the website, then I need to go find that specific shoe on that website. Then I need to add that specific shoe to the cart and then so on and so forth. Hopefully you're understanding the process of what I'm talking about right now. However, let's look at the process on the far left hand side, far right hand side. Ooh, swiping, swiping, swiping. I look at these, I need new trainers. I need some new white trainers and I like the kind of the blue trimming. Hey, why don't I buy those? What has it got there? Click on to shop right now. I click onto it. Not only have I skipped so many different steps, I'm going to click on that button. It's going to take me directly to my website on the page where it has this shoe. And all I'm going to do is add to cart, go to payment and pay. You have now shortened the customer's journey from like 10 steps to like five steps. And that could be the difference between someone buying from you rather than someone else. So hopefully you're starting to understand the benefits of advertising and these call to actions. Uh, Instagram, yes, thank you so much for popping that in. And then the last one, give it a go. What social media platform is this? I feel like we are all really good at social media right now, but it's really interesting that we all know what they look like. Just by looking at it, I know what that is. So thanks so much for the Instagram before, but this one, organic social media, very similar. But the main difference on this particular platform is it's both Google, one's Google, one's Google UK. The one on the left-hand side, Google, has posted, lose the flash, not the moment, now rolling across Pixel phones, see the light night sight. Now, it's got that and it's got a GIF, which is a nice picture. Now, don't get me wrong, it's incredibly visually appealing. I'm like, wow, that's a pretty cool photo. It was probably taken by the Google Pixel. But if I wanted to buy that, there is a call to action. Don't get me wrong. There is a little link on there, which is goo dot gl forward slash whichever it may be yes girl guiding northeast it is twitter so yes on the left hand side eh, there is a call to action but it's not really that appealing it doesn't really make me want to click on something however google uk set digital rules for child's android device with family link so on and so forth and then you see that whole image which says no more be confident with family link google online that whole area if i tapped on that that is all a call to action. If I tap on that, it's gonna take me somewhere. So again, we're eliminating a lot of steps right here. So where should you advertise? That's the big question. There's so many different social media platforms. We've spoken about Facebook, we've spoken about Twitter, we've spoken about Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, those are the ones we spoke about, but there's many, many others, and I'm pretty sure you're aware of them. But now where should we advertise? Well. Number one, we first need to choose your objective. What are you looking to do? Are you looking to get people to like the page? Are you looking to people to buy your products? What is the objective? And while you are finding out the objective, you need to choose your audience, which comes back to the point, understanding your customers. And I always use a simple example of me being a shoe salesman of selling women's shoes and men's shoes. I wanna create something about men's shoes specifically for the men. And I want to create something for women and create something for women's shoes, for example. So think about that. Think about the audience. That's a very basic example. It'll get a lot more intricate in terms of understanding your customers and segmenting them. But it's important that we establish that and then create an ad creative. You've seen how we've done that before. And then set your budget. So first and foremost, when it comes to social media, how do we find more about your audience? Well, I highly recommend you dive into something called social insights. If not something we're going to dive into today because it can go on to a whole other different path. If you'd like to learn more about social insights or getting started with analytics, I highly recommend you click in the link in the description below. There's always some great live webinars coming up uh, around getting started with analytics. And I'll talk a little bit more about social media insights. Furthermore, if you're struggling, please, if you're in the UK, book into a free one-to-one -one mentoring session to, uh, with us, myself, uh, Mohammed, or many other digital experts already and waiting to help you. But the reason I'm saying this is because Social Insights has so much valuable information. They can tell you when are they online? Are they more male? Are they more female? What's their age? And so much more information that's going to allow you to draw up a really good understanding of who your target audience is. Then what are your competitors doing? If you are not advertising and you're still at the early stages of, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to advertise. I'm a pizzeria or well, like Alejandro, who owns a pool supply store, what I would do is I would go into Google and I would just start searching pool places around me. 
find out how is their online presence. Find out where they're advertising. Are they advertising on YouTube? Are they advertising on Facebook? Everybody's publicly posting on a daily basis. What stops you from looking at what your competitors are doing? Now, I'm not saying copy and paste, but I'm saying take what they're doing well, finesse it, make it your own, and then start advertising and then stay ahead of them by understanding how they're performing and then outdoing them with better content, more appealing content. Now, which platforms is driving the most traffic on your website? Highly, highly, highly recommend if you haven't done so already. If you have a website, connect it to Google Analytics. Even if you don't have the willpower to understand Google Analytics right now, the sooner you connect it to your website, the sooner you can start accumulating data. Google Analytics will be completely useful, useless, if you decide to connect it five months later, but you've been driving traffic, you've been doing advertisements, because you could spend lots of money advertising on search engines like Google or display advertising or social media. However, we need to, you need to understand which ones are performing and which ones are underperforming. And what Google Analytics will allow you to do is find out, okay, we did a paid campaign. Let's look at how many people came from that campaign. Then we can look at how many people come from organic search. We can look at how many people came from this particular social media. And we can start understanding where your customers are coming from, and then you can start building on that. So there's a couple of targeting options when it comes to social media. We've got blue, yellow, and red. Now, with blue, actually with all of them, the two main targeting options is the location, the gender, and the age. That is the starting point of targeting a specific demographic. Location, gender, and age is pretty much going to be on most social media platforms. However, if you're looking to focus your advertising or your targeting towards specific interests and life events, for example, birthdays or weddings or whichever it is, maybe Facebook might be the place to go. If you're looking at Twitter, you want to think about the keywords and the following. Those are the two targets that you could potentially follow. And then one of my favorites, which is LinkedIn. If you're looking to find specific people in a specific industry that work in a specific industry, you can use LinkedIn to people search and find out how many, what are the people, excuse me, what's the job title, what are their skills? So the last little activity that I have for you for today, and I really, really hope that you get involved because we've got about eight minutes left, I believe. So what I'd like you to do is match the statement to the social media network. So we have blue, we have red, and we have yellow. So blue, I want to target females who live in commentary like jewelry and have a birthday coming up. Blue dash or equals what social media platform? Next one, red. I want to target people who live in Leeds and are following my competitors. So again, red equals or dash with social media platform. Last but not least, I want to target financial directors who work in IT based in the UK. So yellow equals whichever. Now, Really looking forward to getting your answers, although I'd like you to let you know there is no 100% correct answer here. We have a discussion around the best platforms, but we want to target people who live in Coventry, like Girl Guided Northeast England. Thank you so much for your contribution today. Is blue is Facebook. Why is it Facebook? Because she's highlighted that we're talking about birthdays and we're talking about jewelry. Now, I don't know about you, but I've actually bought something on Facebook Marketplace. So again, when you start tying in these aspects, you're really going to start creating advertisements that are relevant to your audience. Next up, we've got Girl Guiding Northeast England. Red is Twitter 100% because we're following, we're focused on the followers and the location. Next up, and last but not least, we have Blue. Uh, Blue Alejandro has also done that, and he's done the last one, which is yellow is LinkedIn. Why? Because we're talking about IT work and we're talking about directors. So I appreciate all your thoughts and your contribution. And hopefully that little contribution will get your mind to think, oh, that makes sense. Maybe I should do that. So when it comes to social media, if you're looking to start advertising on social media, remember the steps that we've spoken about, which is number one, which is going to be first and foremost, understanding who your customers are. And while you are understanding who your customers are, we want to find out what's your objective. 
Because if you advertise on social media, there's lots of different objectives. Maybe you're looking to get people to like your post. Maybe you're looking to grow more brand awareness to build up to a large announcement. Or maybe you have a package ready to go or a product or a service and you just want to get people to buy this. However, if you've got people to know who you are, your objective would be to drive sales. So you would show this beautiful product on social media and they'll have a call to action just like the Adidas that we saw that says shop now. There's a big difference between shop now and like page. So hopefully you're starting to understand that an objective is important. Your understanding of who your customers are is important. And then understanding where to start advertising and targeting your specific audience. But that's pretty much it. We've got about five minutes left. So I want to pause to see if there's any questions. You have all been absolutely fantastic for engaging in today's session. So a big, big thank you to you and big thank you to Muhammad for engaging as well and answering questions and popping it out there. But let me know. We've got about four minutes left. I'm going to go uh, wrap up today's session, but let us know if you have any wrap up questions. Uh, and if you don't have any questions or any queries, please go ahead into the chat and let us know what is your one key takeaway from today's session? Because you have been amazing because the average human attention span is close to eight seconds. Some even say three seconds. We have really bad attention spans. So bad that, um, wait, what was I saying again? No, I'm just kidding. So it would mean the world to us if you could pop into the chat. If you did manage to stay attentive throughout the full hour, let us know what was your one key takeaway. We would absolutely love to know. While you are doing that, what are your next steps? Well, you've got plenty of opportunities around uh, your coming your way. If you'd like to learn more and you're enjoying these live trainings, please go ahead and click on the link in the description below and book into all of the future sessions. Maybe not all of them, but book into the ones that interest you and I really look forward to, or the team looks forward to meeting you in future sessions and helping you upskill. If you are struggling and you felt this was really insightful, however, you wish you knew a little bit more, I highly, highly recommend if you are in the UK, Book into these free one-to-one -one mentoring sessions. Myself, Mohammed, in the chat, and many of others already and waiting to help you. All you need to do is go to goo, not goo, you want to go to g.co forward slash UK mentoring, and we would love to know more about, uh, hear from you. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the final thank you. I managed to catch a quick question from Pocket Pitchett Morit. That was good. Thank you. Appreciate your feedback. Is there going to be a future sessions for GA4? I can't confirm yes. However, I'm inclined to say that there most likely would be. The reason being is because uh, for those who don't know, Google Analytics is a great platform. However, it was previously on a platform called UA, which stands for Universal Analytics. And there was a certain format and a certain platform to learn more about your customers and start in, uh, finding more about that data. However, in July next year, 2023, UA will be sunset. In other words, it will no longer be used and will be transferring over to GA4, which stands for Google Analytics 4. So yes, I believe there is something going to happen, but I cannot confirm, but I'm pretty sure Google is going to be on that because if there is the change, we need to make sure that all of you wonderful individuals know how to function and use that GA4 to your advantage. But thanks again for your feedback. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. And I say a big thank you to Mohammed. Uh, all I'm going to say towards the end is please, Take the time to fill out some feedback. It would mean the world to myself and Mohammed. But without further ado, look after yourself, look after each other, and I would say bye for now.